So let me tell you a little bit about IDE. IDE has 550 staff in nine developing countries. Those countries include Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Myanmar, which used to be Burma, Ethiopia, Zambia. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> I think you're making very good progress. It's cauliflower. It's cauliflower? I can see it growing. The 550 staff are virtually all local people. Uh, we have 13 people in the head office and the rest are all in the field and uh, our staff in India are Indians. Uh, there's no more than one expatriate in each country. 17 million people have moved out of poverty as a result of IDE's work over the past 25 years. And by the way, we have a very specific uh, uh, goal, that is to increase the income of each poor family by $500 a year. The mission is 150 million more people move out of poverty by the year 2025, and I think that's entirely possible with using the approach that we've developed, and not through IDE alone, but through moving this approach to other organizations. That's part of the reason that I wrote the book. In the book, I start off with a chapter on practical problem solving, 12 steps to practical problem solving. I didn't want to do that because it sounds a little hokey, but the editor forced me to do it. And when I got into it, I really uh, found it quite interesting. Here are the first three steps, which again, uh, like everything else, are very simple and obvious. Uh, and I think this applies to any social problem. I know many of you are working on a variety of social problems, but I think that you can find ridiculously simple, important solutions by following these kinds of steps, and, and each one of them is fairly obvious. The first is, go to where the, uh, where the action is. You can't find out what to do about Hurricane Katrina by sitting in your office, or figure out an, a solution to poverty in Myanmar by sitting in the World Bank uh, office somewhere. If, uh, if Brown had gotten into a helicopter and visited the stadium and the convention center, he wouldn't have been embarrassed four days later with an interview that said, what are you doing about the people in the convention center? And he said, I uh, just learned about that today. Uh, what kept him from getting on a helicopter like all the reporters did and going to those places and learning about it? The second is talk to the people who have the problem and actually listen to what they have to say. Many people who plan social problems really aren't familiar with the people that they're planning solutions to social problems for. So there's only a small proportion of people who actually talk to the people with the problem, in my experience. And then when you talk to them, there's one other step that is often left out. You have to actually listen to what they say. And quite often what they tell you is what you don't want to hear, so it's very hard to really listen. And the third thing is to learn everything there is to know about the specific context in which the problem takes place. That means, in the case of poor people, 75% of dollar-a-day people live on small farms. You have to go to the farms and learn about what kind of land do they uh, farm, what crops do they grow, are those crops that they can make money on? Do they have markets for their crops? So 25 years ago when I started IDE, I decided I would interview 100 small farm families every year and walk with them through their fields. And over the past 25 years, I've done that with 3,000 small farm families. When you do that, the simple practical solutions become obvious. And everything that IDE has done comes out of my talking to small farmers and all of our staff. If I can interview 100 small farmers every year, people who live in Bangladesh can interview 200. And that's through the whole organization. I think that's the most important reason we've been successful. Uh, what IDE does is based on the realization that nothing less than four revolutions are needed to end poverty. If most of the dollar a day poverty is really centered on one acre farms, then we need a revolution in water. The first thing farmers tell me they need to make more money from farming is water control for their crops. If they depend on the rainfall, they can't grow the high value crops that they can make more money from. But in order to do that, they need a whole range of affordable small plot irrigation devices. 
So IDE now has a $13.4 million grant from the Gates Foundation to finalize 13 of these affordable small plot irrigation technologies. Agriculture is based on large farm agriculture. There needs to be a whole new agriculture for small farms. Design, 90% uh, of people who design things, design things uh, solely for the richest 10% of the world's customers. That has to be reversed. And markets, markets in remote rural areas operate very poorly. We have to understand why they operate poorly and create new markets that serve poor customers. I'll talk a little bit about design, but I'll go through this quickly. Design for me is a process of creative problem solving. As I said, 90% of the designers in the world work only for the richest 10% of the world's customers. This is an example of uh, what they've designed. <laughs> a revolution in design is needed to reverse this silly ratio. If you live on a dollar a day, you can't afford to buy anything unless it's really cheap. So the key issue of design for the poor is making it work well, but cutting the price to one-fifth at least, and sometimes much less. The Don't Bother Trilogy, if you ha uh, in design, if you haven't had conversations with at least 25 poor people before you start, if it won't pay for itself in the first year, if you can't sell at least a million of them, don't bother. <laughs> Point is that to come up with any product takes a huge investment of energy. You might as well focus on the products that make a big impact in the world. And that's what we've done. Uh, here's an example. One of the things we've done is treadle pumps. A treadle pump looks like a Stairmaster. In Bangladesh, you can grow uh, a third crop in a year because there's lots of water just 15 feet below people's feet. A uh, treadle pump costs $8. To put it on a tube well costs $25. Uh, and uh, when a farmer buys a treadle pump, the average increase in income is $100 a year net on an investment of $25. So, uh, and virtually all of our products show a return of 300% on the poor person's investment. So that allows them to reinvest. What we did to get one and a half million treadle pumps sold in Bangladesh, as an example, is we activated a private sector network of 75 manufacturers, little $2,000 workshops that made these pumps, uh, 3,000 village dealers um, who sold them for a 12% margin, and we trained three to 4,000 village technicians who installed them. We had a three-day course with a certificate. Uh, and all of these people earned a living from doing this, and then we focused on marketing. Uh, this is what a village dealer looks like in Bangladesh. A lot of the success is based on focusing now on marketing. That's 75% of our energy. Uh, this is a group of troubadours. This is a troubadour group that we hired. They wrote a song about the treadle pump. They played it at the village market. Uh, what you don't see is a guy on a treadle pump and another guy with a leaflet uh, saying, go to Honest Sam's to buy your pump. <laughs> we produced a 90-minute entertainment movie, a Bollywood-type movie. We hired the top Bangladeshi director, the top male lead and the female lead. A Bangladeshi uh, popular movie has a wedding, a near suicide, a funeral, and lots of singing and dancing. So the script for this was boy meets girl, they want to get married, but her father doesn't have enough money for the dowry. She falls into the clutches of a, of a dowry bandit, uh, near suicide, tears. Uh, at, the, at the climax point of the movie, it stops, uh, and the dealers, uh, get their potential customers up on treadle pumps to demonstrate the product. <laughs> uh, the average movie played to three to 5,000 people in open air settings. This is a generator that runs it. Then uh, the movie finishes. Uh, s some friend of the father says, uh, uh, introduces him to the treadle pump. He buys a treadle pump, makes a lot of money. He has enough money for the dowry. They get married and live happily ever afterwards. <laughs> sort of hokey, but it works. It played to an audience of a million people a year. And the key thing is not just to get name recognition, but to make sales as a result. 